as here we are, like verge of the World Cup. You're in the squad. Talk me through a Serena Beebman call up. Well, I actually missed the first one. You didn't? Yeah, well, I was just about to go on holiday, so I had a last minute Zara delivery come in. So I've gone to the door to collect the delivery, came back, checked my phone, and I had a missed call from Serena and I and the assistant manager. And I was like, oh, no. And then literally a second later, they called again, and I was like, thank goodness. I was like, I'm so sorry I missed it. I was just getting my delivery. She told you to be near the phone at a certain time, didn't she, the day before? Yeah, we got a two-hour time yeah. slot, Anton. So, I mean, I've got a parcel coming to the door. It was some of my holiday outfits, you know what I mean? I can't, can't leave that. But, yeah, I nearly did miss my call. How would you celebrate? Um, what did I do that day? I think I was probably just packing from unpacking my deliveries for my holiday, <laughs> packing my suitcase. You went to a I feel game. like we had. To... Oh, that was it. Yeah, you text me. You, you know go to better a gig. than me. You told me. Well, yeah, you told me you were going to a gig. That was it. Coldplay. I thought this could go one of two ways. I'm either going to be sobbing to fix you if I'm not in the squad, or bouncing up and down to Viva La Vida. And I was bouncing up and down. It's fair to say I was with my mum, my dad, and a couple of friends, and it was yeah, it was amazing. They're great in concert. We had a moment to reflect on last summer because you know obviously you weren't playing, you were out injured, you were trying to come back for the start of the next season, you were, you were with us on our big sort of Euros bus. I was working for Sky. You were, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but you weren't doing, you know, you weren't doing what you wanted to do in terms of out there playing, playing for England. So does it, this feel a little bit sweeter now? Yeah, I think I'm very much someone who kind of just does things in life and I never really stop to think back and reflect on how things have come or how things are, I kind of just take things in the moment. But there have been a couple of times when I've thought, gosh, last year I was still doing rehab from my broken leg. And as you say, I was in the stands watching the girls at the Euros and now I'm going to be part of the squad. It is crazy how just such a short period of time can change everything, really. How worried were you? Because the competition was obviously fraught for those defensive places. Yeah, so many good players who've been like in and around the squad all season. So I was a bit anxious beforehand because obviously you see stuff on social media with people's predicted squads and you're in some of them and you're not in others. And I think, gosh, I hope Serena thinks like the ones that I'm in. Um, but I think I've got a good relationship with her and I felt like I played quite well towards the end of the season. So I just kind of had to hope that that was enough. Last time you played for England, you started but it was against Australia when England lost. So were you kind of having conflicting feelings about your place because of that as well? Yeah, I think so, because I was so disappointed with how I played in that Australia game. I think when you get opportunities like that, you just want to do your absolute very best. And although I tried my best, my output wasn't anything close to what I wanted it to be. So I was so disheartened after that game. And I think it probably knocked my confidence quite a little bit in the following weeks. But gradually at club, I kind of built back up and came into the end of the season feeling a lot better. But I definitely think there was a doubt in terms of whether they would keep their trust in me after a poor performance. And I mean, the whole team were probably below where we wanted to be, but I definitely felt like I'd underperformed where I want to be. You had a busy time away because obviously you went on holiday, but you're also out in Istanbul, weren't you? How was that as a, yeah. as a lifelong City fan? I loved the occasion. Like I was in the fan zone all afternoon with all the City fans and I got there quite early, so it was sort of filling up throughout the day and by the time we left it was packed with blues um all in full voice it was an amazing atmosphere and then the game itself was a bit sort of nervy i was a bit on edge for quite large periods of it but when the final whistle went it was amazing so i was sat with like a load of former blues and massive fans nader manua steph was there Sean Wright Phillips and I've seen the just, video of you guys celebrating all hard when, we the, when went the goal bonkers. went in. It took my voice a good four or five days to recover. I was croaky for quite a while after that moment, but it was amazing. Absolutely loved it. And when I actually saw them lift the trophy, I, I just had tears in my eyes because, as you say, I've been supporting City my whole life and that has been for many, many years the club's biggest goal. And I just saw the emotion of the players, and I think that's what set me off because. You know, as a player, when you achieve something like that and you've set your mind to something and you've put so much work into it, the culmination of that moment of actually getting to lift the trophy must just put so much feeling through you. So I kind of felt that for them. Big question, because I know you were in the stands for that Aguero goal. Yeah. You were in the stands for that Rodri goal. Yeah. Which moment was bigger? Which moment? Oh, 
it's, it's such a tough one. I feel like the Aguero moment, we'd had such a low of going 2-1 down and thinking we've blown it. So then to come back, that was pure euphoria, whereas we kind of came into the Champions League as favourites. So I'd almost say the Real Madrid second leg when we beat them 4-0 was closer to the Aguero moment than win the Champions League but I mean it's hard to put the comparison on them they are both special. Let's go back to the World Cup how's it going to feel when you're out there you know you play and maybe if you get to play out in Brisbane for the first game how is that going to feel Esme Morgan a World Cup player for England? I can't really imagine and as I say I'm someone who tends to just take things in my stride and not really consider how amazing it is even until months after I'll kind of not look back and it's only now when I look back on achievements I've had in the past that I think wow that was actually really cool so I think in the moment I'll probably just be in the swing of it all kind of just seeing it as playing for my country it's really special and it might only be later down the line that I really appreciate how amazing it is but I'm just so excited to be around such a special group of players and hopefully we can achieve something special again this summer. Have you thought about what it's going to feel like if you win it? I don't, I don't know if you even could. I always think in football you achieve moments and you feel feelings that you do not get in normal life. Like I've tried to explain it to my parents, the, the high you feel when you get a last minute winner. And I can only imagine that winning the World Cup would be 10 times the feeling of a last minute winner. So yeah i think it would be something that would never be matched again i imagine but serena's very much can't think too far ahead so i mustn't mention winning the world cup